Welcome to Meet the Author, where you can join in on insightful conversations with best-selling and award-winning indie-published authors. Your hosts today are Rob and Joan, who themselves are indie-published authors, book publicists, and paranormal investigators with Tampa Bay Spirits, based in Tampa Bay, Florida. Thanks for dropping by. And now, on with the show. Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Joan. We're glad that you can be here with us tonight. This is a pre-recorded show, which I may comment on a couple of times during the broadcast, because in the past pre-recorded shows that we've had, people are still trying to comment and wondering why we're not answering you. Which you can still comment, just don't expect a response right away. Right. <laughs> and, and we're glad to have you watching sure. live the night that this is on. This will be on the night before Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. And yep. don't eat too much tomorrow. Right. Well, all right, go ahead and eat a lot. <laughs> and you might be very busy tonight, <laughs> but we're glad you're watching the show and listening to the show. Um, you might not know this, but Rob and I have six children and six children-in-law and 14 grandchildren, and we have Thanksgiving and Christmas at our house. So right now... I'm probably losing my mind in the kitchen. <laughs> so <laughs> we really won't be able to answer any of your comments right away. <laughs> so this is episode 34, if okay. you can believe it. Um, it's going to be airing November 24th, like Joan said. Um, and tonight we have a repeat guest, um, author of the popular sci-fi series, uh, The Cassidy Chronicles, yeah. Mr. Adam Gaffin. So we're going to add him in right now and welcome him. Hi, Adam. Hey, Rob. Hi, Joan. Hi. Happy Thanksgiving. It sounds weird to say that to you today. It does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and a happy Thanksgiving back to you. I can't imagine having all of those people in the house. It's we can either. Yes, we can. <laughs> how, oh, yeah, how, we, many how many tables do you have to have to have, have you know, three set up? Three set up, one three giant one and we used, two uh, auxiliary tables. We yeah. used to have three set up in a uh, children's table, but now we don't only have two young grandchildren. They are six and nine. But everyone else is from 27 years old down to 12 years old. And there's only two that are 12. So everybody's pretty much grown up. So <laughs> that means boyfriends and girlfriends that come. <laughs> so yeah, it yeah. even multiplies plies that out. So yeah, sure. it's it's crazy. It's Our house is, place. Yeah, we were yeah. always the but, house. Puts the organized into organized chaos. Yeah, there you go. Um, before we get much farther, I want to mention to those that are watching uh, the live broadcast that's pre-recorded. That always sounds funny to me, but it's true. It is. Um, there is a book giveaway for those that are watching the live broadcast on November 24th. Uh, so if you're watching, uh, stay tuned and get in on the uh, book giveaway. We'll announce that right after the commercials at the bottom of the hour. All right. So what's new with you, Adam? What's been happening lately? Uh, well, let's see. I released the fifth book in the Cassidy Chronicles series um, back in August. That is Triumph's Ashes. And it, it concludes the Artemis War story arc, uh, which is kind of phase one of what I've started to refer to as the Cassidyverse. Uh, these stories, the first five novels, really focused on Ayana and Kendra and what they were going through to establish Kendra's Terran Federation. Uh, since then, I've been working on a couple of projects. Um, one is a novel set in the Cassidyverse, but Ayana and Kendra are not the main characters. It's the first one I'm writing without them as the central figures, and it's set a few years further down the line and centers around a new class of starship that is dispatched on a three-year mission to go farther than anybody had gone before. The idea is to go out and see what there is to see 
It's a massive starship. It's four kilometers long and wow. two kilometers wide and oh has 4,000 people aboard. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, a city in space kind of thing. That's what right. I was just going to say. It sounds like a small city. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. And, and so this one is focusing more on the interpersonal relationships um, aboard the starship because 4,000 people, there are going to be conflicts. There are going to be changes and developments and it's it's been really interesting to write so far. It's 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 fun. Um, I'm also working I'm also working on my Kindle Vela project, which is uh, Ayana and Kendra, but it's set back when they were children. See, they grew up together. Uh, they were they were neighbors, and they they were also born three weeks apart. So they've known each other you know, since infancy. And so I thought it would be fun as a serialized story to write about the misadventures they had <laughs> as children because Kendra's always been Kendra. She's always been impulsive and, okay, let's do something, let's do this, let's do that. And Ayana has, well, she's always been the genius trying to figure out, okay, let's, how, how do we make what Kendra is thinking of happen? So... The problem is, you know, when they're the, the parts I've been writing are when they're five, six, seven, eight years old, and they're not exactly thinking of, well, if we do this, what are the consequences going to be? They're not thinking consequences. They're like, oh, let's do this and let's see what happens. So, yeah, and that one, and that one is written from Kendra's perspective. So it's written in first person. So she, it, you know, it, it, it's in the it's in the way of a memoir, and it's called Memories of Ayana, and that's like I said, it's a Kindle Vela project. How do you like working with the the Kindle Vela? It's interesting. Um, so th there's a there's a knack, and, and, and I'm still learning it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a knack of writing a an episodic series because you have to have you have to have a beginning middle and end of every episode you know so you have to have it has to be a self-contained story but there has to be enough for somebody to come back the next time as well right right so striking that balance um it, it's something i've gotten better and better at so you're finding a challenge it, it is a bit of a challenge yeah um but like I said, because of the subject and because it's written first person, I've got to put myself into Kendra's head, uh, which is an interesting place to be. And <laughs> I bet. And so, oh yeah, yeah. Um, and so, I, I I think I'm getting better. I don't know if I'm going to do another Vela project, um, because. The, the Cassidy stories, they tend to lend themselves to lots of threads coming together at once mm -hmm. um, without the beginning, middle, and end in each separate, you know, each chapter in a book. So we'll see. That, sounds, I, like, that the, sounds like the hard part. It is, is, yeah. the, is the um, format... Uh, user friendly. Uh, the format is relatively user friendly. Uh, Amazon is still beta testing it. It rolled out in July. Right. Um, they're still beta testing it, which means you can you can see it on your computer, so you can read it on your computer. You can read it using a browser on an Android phone. Okay. Um, and I guess there's a Kindle Vela app. If you have an Apple phone, I don't, so I don't know. Um, so, so they're still beta testing it. They're still tweaking it. I think that when Vela goes to the Androids, then it's really going to take off because it's formatted perfectly to read it on a phone. If you look at it on a computer, it's this narrow strip of text right down the middle of the screen. 
Right. And it's really easy to read. It's obviously designed to be read on a phone or, you know, or on a, on a tablet. Um, so when it goes to the Androids, I think it'll, I think it will increase. And Amazon, I know, has been increasing their advertising of it. Um, and they still give every, uh, when you start reading a, a Vela project, it, as a reader, you can read the first three episodes for free. So you get to try it before you have to buy anything. And then Amazon is still, as far as I know, giving away 200 tokens. Once you read three episodes, they're going to give you 200 tokens to unlock more before you have to buy any tokens. Okay. So, right. and the tokens are, I mean, the tokens are, are cheap and unlocking the episodes it's one token for every hundred words and an episode is at least 600 words so you're going to spend at least six tokens but in the in terms of how much that costs you it's going to cost you like two cents a token so it costs you 12 cents to read a 600 word episode okay so that's that's, that's not, not a bad deal as long as they make it easy for people to understand it, you know, that I think that's a key uh, for Amazon anyway, you know. And for the yeah. reader. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, re the reader needs I mean, to. The reader's not going to want to read They it need it to be really user read. friendly yeah. um, in order yeah. to move into that, um, into that stream, you know. Um, so actually, yeah, right now, the Go ahead. Right now, the only bump in the the only bump in the road that I see is they don't have a specific app for it out yet. Once they have the app out, or once they integrate it into the Kindle app, then it's going to take off. Yeah, especially the Kindle app, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. See, we've talked to a lot of authors that are used writing it, but not a lot of readers. <laughs> we haven't found any readers that are reading it, so, so. you know. It's just something I think the audi our audience yeah. would be interested in. Do you get any feedback from readers through that? I mean, uh, I, I've gotten some. It actually has a couple of reviews, um, okay. both of them five stars. So the people who have read it have enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, I you know, and you have the option at the end of each episode to put a thumbs up. Um, and, you know, mine. I decided to go with the weekly format, so I drop one episode a week. Um, every Tuesday, there's a new episode out, so a new one will have dropped a couple days ago. And so, I guess your third episode is one that you need to really amp up and put a put some nuggets in there to make them want to come back to see what's going to happen in Cliff, the fourth one. Cliffhangers, like cliffhanger kind of thing, right? Yeah, ex yeah, that yeah. that would be what most of the authors are going to do, you know, a nice setup, a nice build for the first couple. And then third one, it's like, do they, or don't they <laughs> find That's out cool. next time? There you go. I know you have a lot of fans that really love the Cassidy Chronicles. So for them, this is really great, you know, to see, to follow their, you know, heroines from an early age and see what they were getting up to into before they <laughs> became who they are today. I mean, I, I think that's great. Yeah. I think that's great for your followers. I'm sure they are loving this. So which, which book is your first book? Uh, the first one is just titled the Cassidy Chronicles. Right okay, there. That's this one, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Ayana with the red hair and, Kendra looking a little bit menacing and uh, standing in front of Kendra's car, <laughs> her carefully restored car. I see that. Uh -huh. huh. Okay. That's really good. That is. I also heard that maybe you've been um, entering some of your covers and contests. How has that been going? Good. Uh, yeah. Triumph's Ashes was entered in the October uh, cover of the month contest. Yep, that one. Uh, I love the cover. I, my designer, uh, Emily's World of Design, has done all of the Cassidy Chronicles novels. 
and she is fantastic. She really gets it. Um, and, and she listens too, because, you know, we go back and forth as, you know, as we're setting up the design and talking about, okay, this is what we want to do. This is how we want to do it. Uh, and we'll go back and forth on preliminary designs, but she's usually very close with even her preliminary designs because we've talked so much beforehand and she just, she knows the characters at this point. She, she knows what I want them to look like. And is there an easy, uh, how do, how does, um, how would another author get a hold of her if they were interested? Uh, let's see. Do you know? She is on, she is on Facebook and she's on Instagram as Emily's underscore world underscore of underscore design. She's also on Twitter as Emily designer. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. and hey, you uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna, I was just gonna reiterate. She, she's absolutely fantastic. She, um, you know, her turnaround is quick. The longest I've ever waited for a cover is a couple of weeks. Wow. Wow. That so, is, that is yeah. fast. That's <laughs> to get a good quality cover. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Everybody who's doing books knows that's fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And she, um, she designed as well the cover for the omnibus edition, um, which is all five of the novels plus a novella, which I wrote just for the omnibus. Nice. It's the only place you can get it. it it's there called the Martian, the Martian Gambit. And that's in, and the idea is that it's the Artemis War story arc from beginning to end. Um, now I had, um, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you because I know it's asked a lot mm -hmm. on Every, just about every show that we have of the author who's on that day is um, you were mentioning that particular arc. And is that how you always write? You have uh, an arc that you're following. And of course it would be different for each book within that arc, but do you have a rigid arc that you follow, follow for each each book or are you more of a pantser or are you uh you know an outliner or you, do you start at the end and go back to the beginning right um the term that i've heard for what i do is kind of a a gardener or a planter. i know where i want the book to end up you know i know what i want to get out of it I, I have no idea as I'm writing it how I'm going to get there. So I don't have outlines. I don't have, you know, I'll take notes. Um, as we're talking today, I actually have the notes up for the Cassidy verse novel I'm working on. So I, I have a pay a document of notes so that I can keep track of the characters and who they are and the relationships and what they're doing. Yeah. But I don't plot it out beforehand. I don't write, you know, it just it develops yeah and as it develops and make sure that i keep track of it yeah as you create something you write it down because <laughs> yeah two weeks from now you might be going what <laughs> what did i do there <laughs> so you let see. it's a character it's character driven and you let the characters right drive the story oh absolutely yeah absolutely i mean it, you know i'm an author and the words are definitely mine but it's my character's story. Yeah. So they're the ones who need to tell it. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. And it's hard for someone who doesn't write to understand what you're talking about, but that's very true. I mean, your characters are very real and there are things they won't do and things that they will do. And they may even take you on a road you never intended to go down, but you find yourself oh, going down that absolutely. road. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there, there are characters that, um, just to give you an idea, I, I like to include real names in my <laughs> novels. Yeah. So what I'll do every so often is I'll go up and, you know, in a group that I'm in and say, hey, I, I'm, I'm looking for volunteers. And so <laughs> I, I did that. I did that when I was writing the second volume 
um, The Road to the Stars. And this one girl replied, and yep, this one girl replied, and she said, ooh, I'd love to be in there. And her name was just, what is, Justina Brianna Daniela Garcia. Wow. I was, I was like, oh, that's a fantastic name. I'm turning you into triplets. <laughs> so, so in Road Surprise. to the Stars, yeah. So in the Road to the Stars, there's Justina, Brianna, and Daniela, and they're all pilots, and so they all have uh, their handles. They all have their nicknames. Uh, Justina is Junkyard, Brianna is Batgirl, and Daniela, because she was trained as both an engineer and a pilot, got the nickname Double Dip. <laughs> You know, it was just it was just this cute little clever little nickname, right? And that was the that was the entire intent of having her there. Flash forward to Triumph's Ashes, and Daniela is now a major character. Uh, yes, yeah, she's the one standing uh, on your side of the screen in the background. That's Daniela. And she is a dire wolf pilot. She is the deputy commander of the attack group. And yes, exactly on that side. Uh, She's the one with the and she, short back here. There you go. Yep. And she is, like I said, she's turned into a major character. I never expected her to be anything than a clever nickname. And yet, there she is. Cool. That's way cool. So I have to know, are the triplets identical? I never actually specify if they are or they aren't. <laughs> maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> okay. Maybe yes, maybe no. I, it, it's part of my writing style. I don't want, I, I'm putting so much into these books. I don't want to clog up the books with unnecessary detail. All I want in there this is stuff that is absolutely positively needed to move things forward. So Daniela gets a description. Brianna and Justina, because they are really minor characters, don't. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I will let the reader fill it in with their imagination. You know, they know that they're sisters. They know what Daniela looks like. They can assume that her sisters look like her or not. Yeah. They might want to assume that they look differently because of their, you know, personality or whatever. That's uh, a really good way to write a book for the, the reader is to let their imagination run wild. <laughs> it's perfect. That's why people like well, books. Thank you. And, and, it, and, it, and it keeps from, you know, bogging down with, page upon page upon page of description and exposition and explanation. You know, I, I've gotten to the point where at the end of the books, um, I put in, you know, basically appendices, you know, giving the details which are good for understanding what's going on in the book, but not necessary. Like the end of Triumph's Ashes, there's an appendix, there's an appendix with um, the native life forms for the planet Frere, which play a major part in the book. And there's some of that scattered through the book, but this more this compiles it more and puts it all in one place. And there are a couple of illustrations which I had done so people can get an idea, okay, this is what a Frere's goat looks like. And, oh, and this is what a tree cat looks like. Yeah. Do so you, they can go back to that and reference it if they want to. Do you... Um enjoy creating worlds or do you find it really difficult or both yes, <laughs> yes. um i i definitely I, I really enjoy creating the, the cassidy verse um when i started writing road to the stars it was not supposed to be a cassidy novel i was done with them but yeah the, the first one, the Cassidy Chronicles, is called that 
And it doesn't say, you know, at the bottom, volume one, because it wasn't supposed to be volume one. It was just supposed to be the Cassidy Chronicle. So it was the story of those two. And if you read it, even now, at the end of it, there's an epilogue, which gives you kind of the, and this is what happened afterwards. Um, you know, kind of broad strokes, which haven't li have not limited me terribly much in what I've written since. Right. Um, or I, I've stayed within the guardrails. So anyways, so with Road to the Stars, I had started writing it because I had an idea. OK, there's a there's a unified world government and there's an impending crisis that's being brought on by. Oh, let's see. Uh, and a treaty between that government and the government of the. Um, the the colonies on the moon and Mars and Titan and the asteroids, which is tilted very heavily in favor of those bodies and they're taking advantage of it. And so what is this government going to do? So I had this whole scenario set up and I wrote a few thousand words and I was like, ah, oh, the world just wasn't there. You know, I, I couldn't get, you know, I had this, I had this focused view, but I didn't get the whole world. And so I was like, well, what, happen, what happens if I have this government reach out to the Cassidy's? You know, it's a few years later and, you know, they, they've been influential. So they reach out to the Cassidy's for help. What does that do? And all of a sudden, now it was a lot easier and the world, which had been sketched out in volume one now really got to expand because now it's more about again Kendra and Ayana and the dreams that they've been pursuing and now I can talk about all the obstacles that they're facing in instituting those dreams. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay I've got five dogs asleep behind me so well, we, we hope ours doesn't ours, wake yours yeah. up <laughs> no i, well, I just have the one year buddy <laughs> <laughs> we need to uh break for our commercial uh now uh, we're going to take a couple commercials when we return we're going to talk to adam about uh, book giveaway and blog tour and whatever else comes up so hang in there um and we'll be right back Hey, look at us. We've got a new store. Yeah, we do. It's pretty exciting. What can you find there? We have a number of designs available on t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, laptop and phone cases, pillows, and new designs are coming in all the time. Sounds like a great place to shop for authors and readers. Yeah, and it's easy to find. It's simple. Just visit IndieBookSource.com, click on the store tab, and you're there. At Indie Book Source, you can shop by genre or by author, and you will be buying direct from the author's main purchase link. We offer hundreds of titles and formats that include ebooks, paperback, hardbound, and audiobook. Support an indie author. Visit IndieBookSource.com today. WLFE Digital Broadcast Network presents Variety Unlimited Television. Watch shows like Meet the Author Podcast, The Bipolar DM, Just Cindy, Card Pulls and Coffee, Unfiltered Talk with Bryce, and more. That's right, our shows are your shows on WLFE Digital Broadcast Network. And now, back to the show. Uh, 
Hi, everybody. Uh, we're back. Uh, Joan will be back in just a second. Had a little technical thing to take care of, but um, with uh, involving a doggy. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. Oh, well, let's get your book giveaway going um, at this point. We might as well get that going, right? Um, yep. Here's the book giveaway for everybody that's been hanging in there. Uh, the first three people to email adamgaffinauthor at gmail.com will win an ebook copy of choice. Make sure in the subject line of your email that you put Meet the Author uh, podcast in, in that subject line. Okay. And um, everyone feel free to go ahead and, and uh, send out those emails. Sorry, I was missing, but uh, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> thanks. Our six year old granddaughter is here on her first ever all alone sleepover, and she needed a snack. And our dog went ballistic for some reason. Wanted so a snack too? I, I gave know. him a snack. <laughs> him? Here, her. Oh, okay. That could I don't have been know. the problem. I, I haven't been that long. <laughs> I, I also somebody else's dog is in here. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm old. Yeah. Give me a break. <laughs> so I'm, said, I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to suggest for all the people who are busily composing their emails. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I will happily give you any one of the first five volumes of the Cassidy Chronicles. So Cassidy Chronicles: Road to the Stars, Measure of Humanity, A Quiet Revolution, Triumph's Ashes. However, if you don't know the series, either start with Cassidy Chronicles or Road to the Stars. Because you can start with either one perfectly well. You don't have to read Cassidy Chronicles to read Road to the Stars. Um, but the other ones, especially Triumph's Ashes, yep, that one is uh, kind of the prequel, Road to the Stars, is where things really uh, kick into high gear. Um, now, if you're familiar with the series and you just haven't picked up Triumph Ashes yet, um, well, why not? There's your opportunity. But, there you go. <laughs> here's your opportunity. But Triumph Ashes is the only one I've written that doesn't have a lot of backstory in it because it picks up as a quiet revolution ends there there's no gap between the two it, it's essentially one book that's two hundred and fifty thousand words long uh which is why it's two books yeah so yeah that's a lot of words that that's a lot a lot of words <laughs> yes when i was putting together when i was putting together the omnibus which contains all of the books and all of the appendices and that novelette, uh, the word count is something like 610,000 words wow. in those five novels plus. So, <laughs> in War and Peace, there's a lot of words <laughs> there's in There's a lot and there, peace. I don't know. <laughs> but I think you probably have more than War and Peace. <laughs> just, just saying, that's a lot, a lot of words. Well, also, before too long, I want to put all of this up on how you can reach Adam. His website yes. is www.cassidychronicles.com. Those of you who are listening and not watching the vodcast and you're just listening to the podcast, that's spelled K C, not K, sorry, C A S S I D Y C H R O N I C L E S. I think you all know how to spell dot com. And his Facebook is Adam.Gaffin, A-D-A-M-G-A-F-F-E-N. And <laughs> I love his Twitter handle. <laughs> it's at rabid chipmunk42. Okay, is there a story about a rabid chipmunk? <laughs> um, so way back when, when I signed up for Twitter, I was living in Maine. This is 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. And we had chipmunks running all over the place. And they would <laughs> sit there and chitter at you. And so I thought, oh, well, that's a, that's a cute, you know, that's a cute kind of play on, play on things. You know, rabid chipmunk, nobody would ever expect that. So I tried to take that as the, 
as the handle and somebody already had it. So I threw in 42 because that is, as you know, the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. <laughs> there you go. Uh, for those of you who are sci-fi aficionados, mm -hmm. you get that. <laughs> That's great. We also it notice is. Adam isn't wearing a red shirt. So yes, because he's smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that yes. meme that went around when uh, William Shatner went up in space for ten minutes yeah. and nobody he no on the, noticed he didn't wear a red shirt? Nobody on the flight. Team. No, no, they all were they all wore blue. Blue. There you go. And Instagram is Adam Gaffin. And yeah. you've already we've already given the email, but I'll give it again. It's yeah, I didn't spell it again. out, so yeah. It's Adam Gaffin author at gmail.com and that's A D A M G A F F E N A U T H O R. You would think after all these times I'd get better at this, but nope, uh, I still get time to hide. You do fine. <laughs> well, that was a different response to Rabbit Chipmunk than I thought I would get. Didn't you think you got attacked by one or something? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his mom, I, his mom I, said, don't go near that chipmunk. <laughs> okay, mom. <laughs> because, as we've said, we do have six children, and um, one of our daughters, and I won't name her. Uh, <laughs> she probably knows who she is. Yeah. yeah. Um, one time she went outside, and there was a vole. I don't know if you know what a European vole mm -hmm. is. Okay. And she decided she should pet it, and it let her pet it, and then it bit her, <clears throat> which ensued with the whole neighborhood with every kind of basket and laundry basket and <laughs> bucket that you could think of running around the neighborhood trying to catch this vole so that they could test the vole and not have her go through very painful, you know, uh, treatments. And... We called in animal, the animal services and everything, and they yeah. brought up, they brought a cage that would have kept a raccoon happily inside, Easily, but not yeah. a vole. And the raccoon's family, probably. <laughs> so yeah. a neighbor caught it. The neighbor caught it with the laundry basket, <laughs> and, and that's what they they used to take it to. To be sacrificed to make sure that yeah, she they put it in the laundry basket, then they put it in the dryer and shrunk it. No, <laughs> and then put it in... no they didn't do that anyway. Oh, it wasn't rabbit. <laughs> We're kind of getting right. here, yeah. But I did think, yeah, I really did think that maybe you had a similar story. And in what she no. said afterwards, she was eight years old. And what she said afterwards, when I said to her, What have you learned from this? and she said. Um, that next time I'll pet it on the back end, not on the front. <laughs> I said, no. Mm, not the right thing. <laughs> That's not the lesson. Don't no, no, you, you're, you're missing a little detail there. <laughs> Jeez. So before we get much further here um, and run out of time, which oh. we're kind of running a little late here, um, this is Thanksgiving coming up here tomorrow and you're talking about blog tours you know something about yep. a blog tour so um this month my i've been appearing on a bunch of other indie authors blogs um with some some guest posts some exclusive excerpts um some interviews uh i don't remember which blog it was that picked it up but there is a interview that they did with Cass and Ken, with Ayana and Kendra. So really, th there's an interview floating around out there uh, of the main characters. That's so that really good. Fun. Where yeah. where will you be posting that for um, people to to find out where exactly you're going to be on your website? So the yeah, the best place to go if you if you need to find out yep. anything is CassidyChronicles.com. Okay. Um, because I have all sorts of pages there with, I've got chapters posted up so you can read some, you know, read the books uh, one chapter at a time. Um, you can find out where I've appeared. I put up links for, for example, tomorrow I'll, there'll be a link up there to this 
vodcast and podcast um, so that people can click on it and come back to it. Um, let's see. There are freebies and giveaways there. Uh, before, just before the end, I'll tell your listeners where they can go to get a free book. Okay. Okay. But I'll, I'll hold off until just before the end. Okay. okay. Got about 10 um, minutes. So I just, wanted 10 minutes. Know, okay. I just wanted them to know for sure where they could find right, right. where to find you when you're doing all these blogs and. and Absolutely. Uh, that Cassidy Chronicles.com. That is the place to go because I keep that updated with all the appearances I make and they can go from there or, you know, find me on Facebook. There's a fan page on Facebook that uh, gets updated. There's a Cassidy Chronicles page on Facebook that gets updated. Um, or just reach out to me on any of the social media or send me an email. Say, hey, where are you? What, yeah. you know, what are you doing? Wait, you know, where did yeah. you show up? Where are you hiding? Um, <laughs> where are you hiding? I'm not hiding. He's not and hiding. I, I, <laughs> no, he And I did. I, and I wanted to mention um, during the advertisements, you put up the ad for uh, Triumph's Ashes. Yes. And, you know, I have been so fortunate in finding great people to work with, you know, as an indie author. Um, Lexi Lyric, she's based out of New York City. She is a dancer and she does these uh, book trailers, you know, as a, as a side project. I mean, she could make a living doing these. She is so good at them. Yeah, that is She's such a great trailer. Awesome? I love it. I mean, I love it. Yeah. At the end, you're just like, really? I love the explosion. That, that You don't expect that. It's like, whoa. I know. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Yeah. And yep, there, 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 she's done four of them for me. The, that uh, We really love that one. We've, we've played it a lot because we love it a lot. And we want people to see that and understand what your Cassidy Chronicles are all about. It's like breathtaking every time. It's really a good trailer. And it shows what your book is about. Yeah, and, and, and Triumph's Ashes, um, you know, it's the first one that really gets into, I, I didn't set, up, set out to write military science fiction. Um, I mean, that's a niche all unto itself. You, you really need to have a good background you know, you really need to know, you know, combat in order to write convincing military science fiction. Right. Um, but some of, you know, it, it's the end of the war. You know, it's the end of this two year war that Cass and Ken had no intention of getting into. But once they were in it, they're like, we're not losing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It, We'll end this war however we can. We're just not losing. Um, and the other thing I want to mention, talking about fantastic people that I've been associated with, um, are the, the the narrators I've had because all of the books are available as audiobooks. So uh, Jane Weatherstone did volumes one, two, and three, um, and she's she's a theater performer, um, has great range, really created the characters. And then Veronica, unfortunately, uh, she ran into some scheduling conflicts as theaters opened up more. Uh, she backed away from her voice, her narration work, uh, which was a pity because I really enjoyed working with her. She's, she's a consummate professional. Um, and if she's available, if, if you are an indie author and you need a good, strong female voice who can do most, you know, American, English, Canadian, Australian accents, yeah, grab her. Um, so after her schedule conflict, I went looking and I found Veronica Wiley. And what she's done, she is a... Uh, television and film actress. So I, I don't know if it's the background that's made the difference, but she took what Jane did 
in those characters and she's dialed it up to 11. She really brought the emotions out. She's really brought um, acting into it and added the little details that make that take a book from being narrated to being performed. So, right. and so she's done A Quiet Revolution and she's done Triumph's Ashes. And I, I couldn't be more pleased with either of these ladies. They, there's nothing like it as an author when you hear your own words being read the way you imagined that, that they true? could sound. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, it just it you really hits. When yeah. they say, oh no, and to have it sound like that instead of oh no, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> to hear it the first way, which was the way you wrote it, you're like, yes, <laughs> that's wonderful. That is that is a huge deal right there. Because that's what that's how you wrote the story. That's what you meant. That's the emotion you wanted your audience to to see and to feel and to hear when you wrote it. So that's that's really good. It is. It is. Yeah. That's for well, me, especially uh, with Triumph's Ashes, especially with this one, um, because it, it really um, towards the end of that book, I, I'm really not pulling any punches. Uh, the whole idea. But the, every book has a theme, and Triumph's Ashes, you know, it's an unusual title because the idea I want to get across is that there is no such thing as a triumph without sacrifice. There is no vis victory that doesn't come with a cost. So, are you know, are these people who I've been writing about for umpteen thousand words? Are these people willing to make this sacrifice, you know, it's presented to them. Are they willing to make the sacrifice? Are they willing to pay the cost in order to have their, you know, push their dreams forward, you know, and keep their ideas and ideals alive? And when you start talking about, you know, characters dying, people dying, it really, uh, <laughs> it's never easy to kill off a character. I don't care how minor they are. It's never easy to kill off a character. That's yeah, for sure. it's, it's hard. It is hard. And it's hard for the reader too. You know, they're going to feel real emotion from that. Yeah. Okay, we have about five minutes left. And you had something you wanted to swing back to and talk to people about? Sure. Yes. So if you want to get a free copy of The Road to the Stars, um, go to storyoriginapp.com and type in my name, Adam Gaffin, and it will bring you to a place where you can download your very own copy. All it's going to ask you to do is put in your email because that way you can get my newsletters. Well, no. That's a good I idea. Have one, I have one newsletter, which comes out every two weeks, and that tells you about sales and promotions and other indie authors, you know, and their books and what they're doing. And then Kendra has a newsletter which comes out a few days later again, every two weeks. And what she's doing is she's um, currently telling the story about how she got recruited way back when she got recruited to be a courier and eventually an assassin for Outlook. Um, and I'm not going to say any more. <laughs> some spoilers. There you go. Yeah. So again, where are you and, able to find that? Story Origin, S-T-O-R-Y-O-R-I-G-I-N-A-P-P -P dot com. And put in Adam Gaffin. Put in Adam Gaffin. 
Okay, thank you. And Go the ahead. last thing I wanted to mention is uh, I have also, I've, I've started a Patreon for my fans with levels down all the way down to three bucks a month. Uh, if you're not familiar with Patreon, it's a way to pledge. Think of it like um, making a monthly pledge to National Public Radio for your favorite author. Right. So you pledge three bucks a month and you get certain things. You pledge an another level, you get the certain things and then some more. Um, so far, it's been pretty successful. You know, I, I appreciate the support because it allows me to do more as an author because that money I can take and I can put back into, you know, I, I can put that back into my writing. I can put that back into, um, into the covers, into the narrators and all the wonderful things that everybody knows life ain't free. <laughs> yeah, Boy, narrators so narrators at that level ain't cheap no 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 yeah. professional videos are not not cheap, cheap either. either so, so all those yeah. things cost yep yeah. so uh patrons are you know i appreciate their patronage and so on patreon just go type in cassidy chronicles Patreon at Cassidy Chronicles. I know a lot of artists are doing that, all different kinds of artists, not right, just authors. Right. But I yep. actually, we know some uh, paranormal investigators that are doing that so that they can continue doing what they're doing because that's something that else that we do that, that ain't cheap either. <laughs> yeah. And we don't, we yeah. don't charge anything for anything that we do. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, I, I will say that uh, from the second tier on up, the, the the biggest perk from the second tier up is every month they get a an exclusive look at whatever I'm writing at the time. You know, it's a nice big chunk. It's not just a couple hundred words. It's a nice big chunk of That's the story. Nice. So, That's cool. so they get kind of the in, an inside yeah. look. And if somebody pledges all the way up at the top, um, they get a chance to actually to collaborate with me. Oh, you know, if somebody. Yeah, if somebody want, if they have ideas of where they want, you know, some Cassidy character to go, then that's the pledge to make because then I'll work with them to make it happen. You know, if they want to write it and they want me to look it over and, you know, we'll, we'll collaborate there. Or if they just want to give me the idea and I'll write it and send it to them so that they can look it over and they say, oh, okay, this is what I had in mind or no, I don't. I'd love to do collaboration like that. That's, that's wonderful. That's way cool. That's that is very cool. I'm glad to hear you're doing it. It's that. a good program. Good program. I'd like to see more creative people do it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, looks like our time's up. Yeah. I want to thank you, Adam, <laughs> um, for joining us again. And I'm yes. sure 2022 we'll probably have you back again. And if you uh, if you'll if come, you, if love being here. here. I'm sure, and maybe a, a new entry in uh, the Cassidy uh, Chronicles at that point. So. Well, the Cassidy universe. There should be universe, I should yeah. Say. There should be another one coming out soon. I uh, don't have a date yet, but it, it's getting. Oh, there's a. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Um, yes, it just it's just coming out. There is a Cassidy Chronicles story. It's a short story okay. in. Um, the holiday hijinks, winter whimsy anthology. Okay. It just it's just coming out, and it's set back when Cass and Ken are teenagers. So it's a it's a it's a fun little story. I had a lot of fun writing it, and it it's all about a Christmas party that doesn't quite go the way they planned it to. So if they pop into your website, they'll they'll find stay it. Stay on top of it, yep. right? and yep. maybe get on your newsletter. Okay. Absolutely. We're, we're going to move you over now because we're going to have to get bug out of here, clear the studio. So I'm going to move you over. Uh, December is next week. We've got another live show coming up. Uh, KJ Waters is going to be our 
first author for December. Yay! Uh, we have also coming up Wendy Scott, Kim Nugent, Susan Kite, and Tori Gates are all scheduled at this point oh, for sure. December. A lot of things can happen between now and then, but hopefully uh, that's, that's the, the way it'll be going. That's the mm -hmm. plan at this time. So until next time. That's all, folks. Thank you for joining us here on Meet the Author. Make sure you stay up to date with our show by clicking like, follow, and share. And you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and more. See you next time on WLFE-DV.com. You've been listening to WLFE-DV.com, where our shows are your shows.